welcome to Just Asia, ASRC TV's weekly human rights program. These are the headlines. Rohingya refugee exodus continues as satellite images reveal burning villages. Indian journalists shot dead at a Bangalore home. Independent Cambodian newspaper forced to close amidst crackdown. Pakistani man set himself on fire in protest against police. Indonesian judge sentenced to eight years for corruption. No arrest in acid attack crime against Indonesia's senior corruption investigator. Nepal government ignores UN communication on extrajudicial killings. One urgent appeal from India. Welcome to HRC TV's Just Asia. I'm Annie Lin. This week, Just Asia begins with Burma, where Rohingya refugees continue streaming to Bangladesh after violence erupted in Rakhine State just over a week ago. Although the Bangladesh government has a zero-tolerance refugee policy, it seems that security officials are ignoring government orders and allowing refugees to cross the border. The UN now estimates that 58,000 refugees have made it across. Another 20,000 Rohingya are thought to be stuck along the Naf River, which forms the border. Aid agencies say they are at risk from drowning, disease and venomous snakes. Human Rights Watch has released satellite imagery showing that more than 700 homes have been burned down in one Rohingya village. The Burmese government says their security forces are responding to an attack on more than 20 police posts by Rohingya militants. This is the most deadly violence in Rakhine since October 2016, when nine policemen died in attacks on border posts. The resulting military crackdown led to much violence and fleeing. Both the attacks in October 2016 and on August 25th were carried out by a group called the Iraq and Rohingya Salvation Army, known locally as ARSA. The group says its aim is to protect Muslim Rohingya from state repression. The government calls it a terrorist group. Moving to India, senior journalist and activist Gauri Lankesh was murdered Tuesday at a Bangalore home. Shot three times at close range, she died instantly at her doorstep and her body was found by neighbours. Gauri Lankesh ran the Canada tabloid Gauri Lankesh Patrika, continuing the legacy of her father P. Lankesh, another fearless journalist. Gauri Lankesh was known for her forthright and outspoken views on many topics, but her main focus was India's caste system and the communal and right-wing forces working to destabilize the country's peace and harmony. Her views led to being trolled online, as well as being convicted in a defamation case. Gauri's murder is eerily reminiscent of the murders of intellectuals Narendra Dapolkar and Emin Kaborgi, and it is hoped that there is a serious investigation into these crimes, and also reflection and action by the Indian state on what can be done to force the tolerance for opposing viewpoints and ideologies. Next, an independent newspaper in Cambodia was forced to close this week due to astronomical taxes demanded by the government. The English language Cambodia Daily had been given a deadline of one month to pay 6.3 million US dollars in years of back taxes which the publication disputed and described as astronomical. The paper printed only a few thousand copies a day, but had a reputation for breaking news about sensitive topics such as corruption, environmental issues and land rights. It published its last edition on Monday with the headline, Descent into Outright Dictatorship. In the run-up to an election next year, Cambodia has seen a widening crackdown on independent media, opposition politicians and rights activists. 18 radio stations were ordered off the air last month, and local radio stations have been stopped from leasing time to the United States-funded Radio Free Asia and Voice of America. In Pakistan, a 28-year-old man set himself on fire at the Atta Hazari police station in Punjab's Jang district last month to protest against the police setting free a suspect in his wife's rape case. According to media reports, Safda complained to the station house officer, Gulam Abbas, that the investigation officer had set free the accused after accepting a bribe. He appealed to Abbas to take action against the investigation officer and arrest the suspects. However, Abbas abused him and asked the constables to throw him out of the police station. Safda then set himself on fire outside Abbas' office and died from his injuries a few days later. While several officers have been suspended following the incident, including Gulam Abbas, 
and investigation officer Navas now. Nothing further is expected to occur. Deeply entrenched corruption within the police institution has made it difficult for the common Pakistani to approach police for redressal. Justice in Pakistan is not given as a right, but rather it is given up for sale to those with deep pockets and nerves of steel. For this reason, the majority of criminals escape prosecution while victims to think many times before making police complaints. Indonesia's Corruption Court on Monday sentenced one of the country's top judges to eight years in prison for taking bribes, the second time a constitutional court judge has been imprisoned for bribery since 2014. A five-member panel of judges ruled that Patrialis Akbar was guilty of receiving thousands of dollars from a meat importer to influence the outcome of a judicial review of the law on animal husbandry. The meat importer, Basuki Hariman, was earlier sentenced to seven years in prison and his secretary, Ng Fei, received five years. In 2014, Akhil Mota, the former chairman of the nine-member panel of judges of the Constitutional Court, was sentenced to life in prison for accepting bribes. Nearly five months after an acid attack against Indonesia's novel by Sweden, a senior investigator of the country's corruption watchdog, no one has been prosecuted for the crime. The police investigation to reel the mastermind and actors behind the acid crime has been slow and unclear. As a result, there is increasing suspicion of a lack of police commitment and political will to seriously find and prosecute the criminals. Even after the police published a sketch of the alleged perpetrators who threw acid at Novel, leading to a serious eye injury, the perpetrators could not be found. Meanwhile, the government has ignored public calls to set up an independent fact-finding team to back the police investigation. According to civil society, the acid attack against Novel is part of an effort to weaken Indonesia's Corruption Eradication Commission, known as the KBK. After the KBK named the House of Representatives Chairman, Mr. Sergio Novanto, as a suspect of the alleged corruption in the electronic identity card case, the parliament immediately established a special team to examine the KBK's work. The special team even visited the jail where corruption suspects are detained and collected information on violation of fair trial principles. The Indonesian public calls on the parliament and president to stop intervening the work of the KBK and instead to concentrate on arresting the perpetrator and mastermind behind the acid attack against Mr. Noble. Yang sebesar-besarnya kepada semua rekan-rekan yang telah mendoakan, eh, yang telah memberikan perhatian dan dukungan tentunya. Khususnya dalam hal ini adalah dari rekan pemuda Muhammadiyah dan Okam dan eh, tentunya rekan-rekan lain yang tidak bisa disebut satu-satu. Mengenai mata saya sekarang memang sedang dalam eh, proses eh, penyembuhan, terutama mata kiri yang prosesnya perlu waktu dan ada perlu tahapan operasi untuk menyelesaikan agar bisa fungsi melihatnya kembali. Yang jelas saya ingin menyampaikan semangat kepada rekan-rekan semuanya bahwa saya tentunya dengan kejadian ini tidak akan berharap tidak akan e, mengendur atau berkurang semangat. Saya berharap dengan kejadian ini justru menambah semangat terkait dengan pemberantasan korupsi, terkait dengan hal-hal lain yang merupakan tugas dan tanggung jawab uh, kita semua. Uh, begitu juga dengan harapan orang-orang yang telah berupaya untuk menyerang saya untuk me memendam, untuk menghentikan langkah-langkah pemberantasan korupsi, saya ingin menunjukkan bahwa harapan orang-orang itu akan sia-sia. Tidak ada gunanya dan uh, saya tegaskan bahwa itu tidak akan bisa sebagaimana yang mereka harapkan. Ini juga sebagai penyemangat untuk kita semua, terutama anak muda, uh, pemuda Indonesia yang dengan begini kita berharap ke depan kita semakin kuat, semakin perhatian dengan kepentingan negara dan bangsa dan kepentingan orang banyak. Baik, saya kira itu. Terima kasih atas perhatiannya. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. The government of Nepal 
has yet to reply to a joint communication by the UN Special Procedures regarding the Tarai killings and other human rights abuses of 2013 to 16. The deadline for answers to the various queries made by the Special Procedures, including the Special Rapporteurs on Extrajudicial Executions and Freedom of Expression, was 7 August 2017. The various incidents of extrajudicial executions and the excessive use of force by Nepalese security officers between 2013 and 17, including during demonstrations held by ethnic minority groups, resulted in over 40 persons killed and several others injured in Nepal's Tirai region. Despite local and international calls to investigate these, the Nepal government has turned a blind eye and remained silent on the matter. Finally, the Urgent Appeals Weekly features one case from India where several manual scavengers have died recently. The practice of manual scavenging continues across India despite being outlawed in 1993 and being strongly condemned by the Supreme Court on several occasions. Over the past 45 days, at least nine men have died while engaging in manual scavenging. None of them were provided with safety gear in clear violation of the law. That is all for this episode of Just Asia. For more on these and other issues, please visit www.humanrights.asia or www.alrc.asia forward slash Just Asia. Thank you for watching and see you next week.